Um, yeah, I'm happy to be here. Minimalism, people, I feel like people always ask, how did you find it? How did you get into minimalism? And like she said, um, I, classic teacher in public education, I had said yes to way too many things, right? I and mean, we've all had that at different times in our life where, wow, I've said yes to more than I can handle. And then when my first was born, it like pushed me over the edge, right? And I felt totally out of control of my life. <laughs> because I couldn't back out of things. And, um, as, as kind of a coping mechanism, I started by decluttering my clothes. I thought, well, if I don't have to decide what to wear in the morning, that will just simplify my day. And it totally worked. And I got totally hooked. And um, I read all of Marie Kondo's book, if you've read or seen her show. I probably decluttered. So we lived in a two-bedroom apartment at the time. So you can't have very much stuff in a two-bedroom apartment. I probably got rid of 50% of our belongings in two weeks. My poor husband. <laughs> what is happening? Um, and it took him a little while to get on board. So um, if we need to talk about um, getting partners on board, we can talk about that as well. Um, but uh, it has totally made our lives simpler, more manageable. And as I've it just kind of spread. I started with stuff, but then it spread to other areas of my life. And I just kind of got obsessed with maximizing my time and making sure I, I was spending all my time on the things that I really love. And um, when anything changes your life like that, I don't know, maybe like the gospel, you tend to want to share it with people and be like, everyone needs this. Or if it's a book or a podcast or whatever. Like, everyone needs this. It will make their lives better. And uh, that's what I kind of do. Um, it started by just posting little things on Instagram, and and then people were like listening to them, which was weird. And uh, not that I have a big following or anything. I, I now mostly uh, post like little videos on TikTok. That's where I'm, I'm mostly posting. And uh, I do these boot camps, just whenever I feel like it. <laughs> um, but I'll have information at the end on that if if you are more interested in it. Um, because I just like to help people, and I like to cheer people on, and um, I enjoy teaching. Obviously, I'm a public educator, um, so it's just a different way of teaching and spreading happiness and helping people. And So, yeah, I love doing it, and here I am. Okay. All right, I've got two definitions for you today. First is scarcity mindset. Scarcity mindset is when you are so focused on a lack of something usually time or money, that's when scarcity mindset comes up the most, is that you can't focus on anything else or find any of solutions to problems. You're so focused on the lack that you can't look outside of it and look at other possibilities. So some examples of scarcity mindset, maybe at work, you're secretly upset that your peer was promoted because now you feel like there's less of a chance you will be. That scarcity mindset. You're so focused on the lack of opportunities that you can't look outside of it and see any possibilities for solution. Okay. At home, maybe it's um, there's nothing to eat in your house. <laughs> now, usually, there's not real scarcity, right? Where we live, we are lucky. Um, it's usually you're missing like a few staples, right? Like milk or bread or something. But nothing to eat. Um, so you're so focused on that lack. You can't look outside of it and um, find other solutions. Um, and at church, you can't get released. No one can do your calling as good as you do. Right? Yeah, I do. Maybe, maybe I've got some specific people in my mind who made that one. Um, that, those scarcity mindsets. So, um, those are just some broad examples. How many of us have felt scarcity mindset in our life? Okay, it should be everybody, right? We have all felt scarcity mindset in areas of our life. Okay, on the flip side, the opposite of scarcity is abundance. Abundance mindset is the paradigm, the thought that there is plenty out there for everybody. There is plenty out there for everybody. Okay, so to flip these examples at work, you're excited for your peer's promotion because her wins don't take away from yours. Yeah? I wish I brought my teaching clicker from my classroom. I really <laughs> wish I had brought it. I'm sure you haven't gone grocery shopping in a while, but there's got to be something here. We can we can get a little creative with dinner. Maybe it wouldn't be a, a winning recipe, but that's okay. Uh, my dad is incredible at this. 
Sometimes I wish I could just be like, come to my house, Dad, tell me what to make for dinner. He's just, he's just good at that. Um, and then, of course, you can be released from Relief Society President or Activities Committee or whatever it is because even though the next person won't fill the calling in the same way you do, they will do a perfectly wonderful job, right? That's abundance mindset, that idea that there's plenty out there for everyone, right? So how many of us have felt abundant? Yeah. yeah. So when I think about these two definitions, I automatically in my head think of in some areas of my life, I naturally slip into scarcity mindset. In other areas of my life, I naturally am abundant in. Okay? We're going to talk about that. So I want you to turn to the person next to you. If you don't know each other, most of you were chatting before, but introduce yourselves if you don't know each other. And I want you to talk about what areas of your life are you naturally scarce and you have to work on it, and what areas are you naturally abundant in. Okay, it is a church-sponsored women's conference, so we're going to get into the scriptures a little bit. There is abundance mindset in the scriptures. We live in an abundant gospel, so we're going to get into it. So pick one of the scriptures on the slides. I figured we were safe with our cell phones getting the scriptures, right? Um, pick one of them and read what the scriptures have to say about an abundance mindset. Now that we've read a scripture or two, a couple of you flipped down to a few, um, I want to hear some shout-outs. What words are you associating with abundance? The abundance mindset. What are some words you associate with abundance? Peace. 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 Glory. Glory. Good Joke. nature and running yeah. over. Good nature, running over. You free to get. You freely give. Freely get, freely give. Meek. Meek. Treasure. Life. Treasure? Life. Life. Jesus Christ. Power. Power? These are great words. God shall provide your need. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful messages. Beautiful messages. Um, for me, the number one word is peace. So I'm so glad you said that first. Um, abundance equals peace. My favorite abundance mindset phrase that I repeat to myself is, I have enough. And if I don't, I'll figure it out. I have enough, and if I don't, I'll figure it out. And this applies in so many situations. Um, scarcity to me equals fear. That's the like, core of it to me. It's true. The what if. What if I need it someday? But what if but someone gave it to me, but I spent money on this. All those thoughts <laughs> that come from scarcity mindset all rooted in fear. The gospel advocates for abundance mindset. And if you have an abundance mindset, it's easier to happily declutter all your stuff. It's easy to freely give because you know you will freely receive. It changes everything. Um, tithing, right? That's what our gospel talks about. We no problem giving 10% of our income because... Blessings come back to us. Maybe not in money. Not usually in money. But in different ways, right? Um, I like this Luke 11 one. He hath had two goats. Let him impart to him that hath none, and he that hath meat. Let him do likewise. If you have more than one coat, you're doing it wrong. Just kidding. Oh, no. Okay. I only have one coat, but that's... <laughs> I'm a bit lost. Okay. Um, in Corinthians 9, 7, God loveth a cheerful giver. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are those too small? Should I make them bigger? I can make them bigger. No, You're good. Go back for a second. Oh, sure. <clears throat> okay, carry on. <laughs> sure, no problem. Um, and I can, when they post the YouTube video, I can put the link in the description. And, you know, I have to hear only this now, though. Come home tonight. Yeah, yeah. So go ahead. Hey, okay, good, 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 good. I love it. Um, and we can get into like the more nitpicky questions that we have later about decluttering. There's also like times and phases, right, of our lives that we're more scarce and more abundant. Um, my six-year-old likes all the tiny things, right? <laughs> and that's natural. And anyway, 13-year-olds kind of do the same thing. It just looks different. Um, okay, if the scriptures aren't enough, there are like medical benefits, <laughs> health benefits to decluttering and having a clutter-free life. Um, I got this list off of WebMD. Um, there's so much cool research out there. Um, number one, decreased stress. I feel like we could all use that. 
Um, better focus, I could use that. <laughs> we have different personalities, higher self-esteem. I thought that one was really cool. Um, it encourages healthy choices, including healthy eating, better sleep, um, and your house is easier to clean. So it can reduce like allergies and things like that when you've got less dust in your house. There's so many more. So if the scriptures weren't good enough, there's science to back it up too. It's uh, liberating to yes. get this stuff. Yeah, it really is. It be, when it's too much stuff is a burden. Yeah. It just is. Okay. What you're here for. How to declutter a space. Yes. <laughs> okay. It's going to sound really basic, but I will get into some examples and, and help, uh, help you out there. So first, you pick a space, you empty it out, and actually clean. That's my favorite part, is that I can actually, like, get all the dust and crumbs out of the space, right? Mm -hmm. um, do not just sift through and be like, oh, I'm going to throw these away and call it good. It's not nearly as effective. It doesn't have the same kind of impacts as like clearing out of space. So my first example I'll give is a junk drawer, because we all got them, or three, or five, or whatever. Um, so a junk drawer, you take everything out of the junk drawer, vacuum out the crumbs at the bottom, wipe it out with some cleaner, start with a new fresh space. Number two, you're going to sort with an abundance mindset. And of course I do this sometimes at the same time as I'm cleaning out of space, so it's not like clear to find steps. So you're going to have several different piles. I always have a trash can. Um, I usually have a donate pile, right? Um, you're going to have a relocate pile. So things you decide, oh, these don't actually belong in here. So in a junk drawer, things famously get stuck in there that don't actually belong there, right? And then the last one is the keep pile. These are the things that I want, I'm using, and they belong here. So those three separate piles. Toss, relocate, and keep. So in a junk drawer, that will look like um, chucking everything broken, <laughs> everything useless, um, donating things that are still useful but not to you. Um, the key here is the fostering the abundance mindset, right? Fostering the abundance mindset. So if you really think about it, how many pens do you need? <laughs> What if you run out? <laughs> what if? That's your secret set, right? Scarcity. So what if you run out of pens? What if you actually run out of pens? So you can buy more as with like one couch. Don't pens just show up no matter what you do? I work really hard. It only has a pen because I love in my house and I still have way too many pens. I don't understand where they come from. They just show up, right? So that's a button so that acknowledging that, right? Okay, so if you're like, how many pens do I actually need? No. So you're like, okay, worst case scenario, I place categories in eight friends. <laughs> you need eight pens. You probably have 35 in your drawer. Yeah? Not good. That, that might be exaggeration. And half of them don't work. And half of them don't work. Yeah. That's my favorite part of declaring a junk drawer is testing all the pens. Yeah, anyway, that's <laughs> that part of it. Um, so yes, you're going to obviously throw away the ones that don't work. You can um, rubber band together and donate big bunches of pens. But the big thing is you'll learn to stop taking free pens. Okay. <laughs> I saw this one today and I'm going to the bank. <laughs> but I'm using it. Sometimes I can have my favorite pens that way. There's nothing wrong with that. Sometimes they just show up. No shame here. They just show up. But I am more likely now to say no thank you. When it's like, I, don't, I know I don't like that kind of pen. I'm a, I'm a pilot G2 gal. Um, okay, so we're on pens. You probably have 35. You probably only need eight. So you're going to get rid of the broken ones, the ones that don't really work. You're going to get rid of the ones, and you, now you can get to this point where, okay, I don't really love them. You're probably gravitating towards your three favorite pens anyway, right? So if you get rid of all the excess, it saves you every time you open your junk drawer looking for a pen because it's just right there, the one you actually want. Can you have like another space with a bunch of pens in case you run out? <laughs> so, like maybe in the basement. There's so yeah, there. as you're working on your abundance mindset, right? You can build in safeguards for you. So this is where Marie Kondo and I disagree. She's just like, get rid of it all. You don't need it. You never have to declutter again. I don't really feel like that's realistic. Um, but if you're working on your abundance mindset, building in safeguards so that you can build trust is really powerful. So. 
I'll get to clothes in a, uh, in a second, but when my mom decluttered her clothes, she was having a scarcity mindset about it, right? Which we can all relate to having a scarcity mindset about clothes. So in her guest bedroom, she, we did like yes, no, maybe piles. She put all her maybe clothes in the guest bedroom. And then so she'd have to walk all the way across the house to get things out of that closet. And so then she like set a timer on her phone in six months, whatever I haven't gone to go get, it's out of here. That's good. So building in that safeguard so you can trust the abundance mindset. We do not want to scar anybody here. Like, I got rid of it, it was the worst decision ever. That's not what we're going for here. We want to build abundance mindset, not revert back into scarcity. So if keeping a bunch of pens in a cupboard in the basement helps you, when you revisit it, you're like, you know what? It's been a year, and I have not come down here to get a single pen. I can donate it now. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Good. You're asking the right questions. I love that. I love that. Okay. Did we cover that one? So sorting with abundance mindset. Working through that scarcity mindset. Trying to be abundant. Trying to recognize those scarce thoughts. And then last but not least, put things back neatly. I know that's sometimes the hardest part, um, but the big key here is that spaces that have the right amount of stuff are easy to organize. If you're like in your nightstand, you're in your junk drawer, and you're like, things are just not quite fitting, that's because you have too much stuff. That's all. That's all. So you need to go back to step two. Okay, what should I relocate? What do I actually maybe not need in this space? Okay, maybe you're going to cover this later, Maddie, but the bottlenecks for me are the things that are the outliers, like, oh, wow, this is like this really sentimental little thingy, I'm not quite sure what to do with this, like, where do I put, yeah, where do I put that stuff, like, I just don't know right now, but I don't want it to hold me up on what I'm trying to accomplish right yeah, now. Yeah. Um, so, obviously, sentimental things are, like, the hardest things to declutter, right? Um, yeah, yeah. So we can get into it. Um, you're supposed to keep the things that serve you. So the things that lift you up. So Connie's mom is my grandma. And she's, I'm really going to cry because you're here. She's beloved to me. And I share this story like all the time, but it's because she's here. So, <laughs> so sorry. What are your tears? I <laughs> feel my feelings. It's good. Um, when my grandma died, I hoarded her things. Anything that my mom texted me, we, we went through this cupboard, is there anything you want? I just took it all. <laughs> right? I, and I was like already, I don't think I was, had quite declared things yet. But that's natural, right? It's like, yes, I want everything that she's ever touched, even if it's not actually important, right? But then as I got farther away from the initial grief, and I was able to slowly recognize, okay, that's not actually important. This object isn't. So now I've been able to hone it down to the things that lift me, that make me feel closer to her, and help me remember her. And it's incredibly powerful. I have one board game. That one board game helps me bring so many memories of playing games at her dining room table. Right? My grandma could deal cards, shuffle and deal cards. She was amazing. And she would get on the ground and play jacks with us. And she would play dodgeball with us in her backyard. She was incredible. But having that one game brings it all of that. I don't need all the games. I don't need all the things. Um, anyway, I don't need to keep talking about my grandma. But that's how you check in with sentimental things. If it lifts you, if it brings you joy not holding it back, not keeping it out of guilt, not keeping it out of these other things. You also try to keep sentimental things that can serve you, actually serve you. I love playing Rooney Cube. I like that game. And so now every time I bring it over, I just did it with a girl's night a couple nights ago. And I pull it out, and I'm like, we're playing Rooney Cube tonight. I guess so, this is my grandma's game. And I got to just share that with them, and it was wonderful. Um, I lost my train of thought. But things that are just sitting in drawers, sitting in boxes, are not necessarily serving you. So special things, you try to bring them out, put them on shelves, and you know you love it if you're willing to dust it. <laughs> right? 
You need photos and frames in books that are accessible, not in boxes in the basement that are not doing anybody any good. Things like that. So would you recommend almost sometimes even having a holding, like you said, relocate. So it's kind of like, yeah. here's a photo, it's special, but I'm not doing photos right oh, now. Oh, yeah, certainly. So you just maybe put that in a box or put it somewhere else in the photo area. So yeah. when you go do that or something. That makes complete sense to me. You put it on memories and family search. Mm, that's yes. a great way yeah. to deal with that. <laughs> yeah. I had a comment. So, um, it, well, it's it's interesting how that board game was sentimental to you, but it was probably meaningless to a lot of people in the family. You know what right. I mean? Like, I care about. Right. Care so about one thing that you. we've done in our family in various settings is stuff that my like my mom wants to get rid of things, and so she would put it all yeah. out in her garage, yeah. and she'll have like banquet tables, and then she'll let the grandkids go and pick. Like something that's sentimental to them. That's a powerful way to do it. And so, and then we also did when my grandma was passing away, she was going to die, and she had a room full of all things that she wanted to give away. And each grandkid went in at one at a time and picked out whatever it was, and then she said, Oh, this is where I got it. You know, and then people picked up the most random things. Like my little brother picked, he was like eight, and he picked out like these Chinese soup spoons. But he, he remembered using those, you know, and then my sister picked out like a a toy that was a three-headed dragon. You know, you just like, yeah. So <coughs> it's just so if you're decluttering and you think like, oh, my kids might want this, like you could have a little like called grandma's garage. So yes. like, my like kids that. went and just picked out something, and then you know she DIY'd the rest. Yeah. But if you're just like, what is? You know, my mom doesn't like to get rid of things because someone might want it, but she went through the first phase of what you know <laughs> the grandkids already went through it. You know, and if your kids pick out something that you know like too much stuff, you could always. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when it loses its meaning. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, people are just attached to the most random things. Yes. They have special memories attached to those things. So it's yes. just a little idea. Oh, I love that. And my your uh, grandma. Yes. You know? Oh, I love that. Um, I know my yeah my parents. I mean that's what my mom would do. She would text photos to the family and be like, "Who we want to That was virtually the same thing. My husband's grandma. I don't think she's gonna die anytime soon. But I think she's done this for like 15 years. She has a piece of masking tape. Under, like, and behind, like, everything in her house has been claimed. Oh my god. <laughs> by all the grandkids and cousins, and I think it's the funniest thing. But it's gonna be very easy when she does pass forever away. <laughs> to be like, oh, well, this is Trisha's. There you go, you know? <laughs> anyway, so yes, yeah, there are beautiful ways to purposely get rid of things. And the other thing we made it too is that at Family Reunion, we would have, like, um, little things that raise money for the Family Reunion. And so my grandpa, brought out a bunch of stuff that he didn't really want anymore, like, or sentimental to him, but he's in his 90s, you know, and he, you know, people, you know, the people bid on it, you know, and oh, and I God. bid on, he had this, he's a cowboy, he's like, like a bolo tie, you know what I mean, just like this little, <laughs> it's like the only thing I wanted with my grandma's, yeah. grandpa's, but it was like probably not, you know, that big of a deal to anyone else, but I got what I wanted, you know, <laughs> and someone got like grandma's so funny. dishes, or grandma's teacups, or mm -hmm. anyway. Oh, I love so there's that. so many fun little things you can do yeah, to get rid of stuff. Yeah, <laughs> stuff that can be a burden, but it also is a beautiful gift. Right? I love people getting more space. What do you want to do? Some people get ready, some people get it. I have a lot of jewelry. Some was my mother's, some were gifts to me, some were purchased. Mm -hmm. A lot of jewelry, you know. Mm -hmm. I love to do with it. Yeah. You give it to the DI. Um, well, like. like um, if it's valuable, I mean, with my great importance and stuff, they had it, yeah. like, valued and sold it. Some of it's valuable and some of it's just right. lucrative. Yeah, and, and, like, I have pieces of each of my grandmas that maybe I don't wear all the time, but they're important to me. So offering it, give them to people when you're ready to let them go and nobody wants them. <coughs> send, them send them along the right. People love to... Like, thrifting is so popular right now. I <laughs> think something it's so that you're popular. like, I do not like this when someone's going to be obsessed with, right? Yeah. 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 Um, one thing that helped me when I read Marie Kondo's book was recognizing sometimes the gift, if you receive something, its purpose was for the giver, mm -hmm. not necessarily the receiver. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. it's okay if you get rid of something that someone gave you. It has served its purpose. Yes. You don't have to hold on to something you don't love just because of the Yeah, it doesn't get rid of their love when you get rid of the object. But what if they come and say... <laughs> <laughs> That's scarcity.
Rosie. Well, that's fear. Wearing that necklace. Has that ever happened? Yes. 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 <laughs> there are specific personalities that do that. Um, and it's really hard on the people in their lives. But I know those people aren't doing it on purpose. Do what? Um, like ask Do you like, where's that necklace? Oh, where's that thing oh, that I gave like, you? Uh, where's the punch give it away. I, I haven't seen you. I haven't seen you no. use the punch bowl. I haven't <laughs> seen you wear this necklace or whatever. Um, so just I, what do you say is what I'm asking. Huh, what do you guys think? Did they give it to someone? Yeah, like they've gotten rid of it. Well, you could maybe say someone else say. just loved it so much <laughs> that I sent it along. That oh, that's beautiful and very positive. <laughs> Even though it might have been someone at the GI that you just said, I'm not sure. Yes, yes. Exactly. <laughs> or you just <laughs> someone else loved yeah, it and they it sent is. it on its way. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> My mom is a big giver. She was a yes. big gift giver because she loves to shop. And so she would shop for all my kids mm -hmm. and me. Well, it started filling up my house, mm -hmm. you know, and so I had that, I was in that dilemma, kind of like, yeah. well, I can't get rid of this because my mom got it for me, you know. But at some point, I kind of had to, but it was kind of a message, because I see my mom is often, you know, it was kind of a message to her, you know, to say, we're trying to clear things out, you know, to, so that we have more time for us and with us and with you. And so she's, over the years, she actually buys less. Yes. So it is wonderful, but she just couldn't help herself. <laughs> Um, I had some tough discussions with my mother. <laughs> it just happens. Yeah, and I Stop still kind of feel bad because I think I ruined it for like the whole family. She just <laughs> I don't know what you think they are. But um, I don't know. It's just a we're all growing and learning and learning how to work with each other. And I just said no, thank you a few times. So she stopped. But um, she knows when I say yes, I really mean it. And yeah, it needs to be like really meaningful. And this might not be related, but I, maybe we covered it on this late, but the, um, as I've been cleaning out some stuff, I think in terms of like, you know what, if a fire wiped out all of this stuff, would I have all my really important photographs together? Mm -hmm. They're not mixed in with my kids' memory boxes, which I've been having them go through because I have some married kids and still 16-year-olds. So, you, what if it all burned? Do you know what I mean? It would, yeah. it, it would be okay. Nobody's going to die. It's kind of a, kind of a fear-based right. abundance. <laughs> what's really important to me? Special little thing that you would grab knowing mm -hmm. out your mm -hmm. house, knowing that your house was going to burn before you take. You know? yeah. Yeah. I love that. Um, okay, one more thing I was going to say about um, putting things back neatly. <laughs> a lot of people get stuck on um, having the right organization tool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you can work on your abundance. Okay, everyone loves a good drawer organizer. Or I guess certain personalities <laughs> love a good drawer organizer. Um, but again, working on that abundance mindset, you have everything you need. You have everything you need, and if you don't, you'll figure it out. So you're going to look at old Tupperware. You're going to look at what um, things did I just put in my recycling bin that could work. Um, I love tissue boxes with the tops cut off. Um, with cardboard, you can if you have like a weird specific shaped space, you can cut it apart and tape it together and create a like, custom drawer divider. And you can cover it in wrapping paper if you want it to be beautiful, right? There are ways around it, um, so you don't need to get held up on beautiful drawer organizers. You have everything you need. Okay? What do you do with the tissue box or the top? <laughs> Just, Just as like a top. square box. I just, just like them. It for stuff. Oh, you mean you cut the entire, not the round hole that yeah. the tissue comes out of? Yeah, right. Right. I just off. cut a, yeah, this oh, whole okay. square off the, the top, square. and then it's just a square box. Oh, that's a good idea. Put yeah. little stuff in Just an empty <laughs> tissue box. I also keep like my grocery sacks in, my extra grocery sacks. Anyway, it doesn't have to be fancy. It works. Um, okay, so we talked about. We talked about junk drawers. Um, we can talk about clothes specifically. Okay, so if you were going to declutter your clothes, you would empty out a space entirely. So whether that's like um, all your hanging items or a drawer in your dresser or whatever, you empty out entirely, vacuum it out, because Kim just knows when was the last time we did that. I don't know. Right? <laughs> this needs to be done. Um, and then you're going to sort things through into donate, keep, um, and believe it or not, relocate piles. You should only have things in your clothes spaces that you can wear right now. Oh, 
So only have things to do spacing. The right now, so that means you should not have um, scarves and hats and woolen socks in your prime real estate sock drawer right now. It's not appropriate to wear, so you don't need it in your space. It clutters up your brain. Um, if you clear out um, seasonal things and sizes that you're not in at the moment, then um, it'll it'll build your abundance mindset. If you're looking at a bunch of stuff that you can't wear, guess what? You'll feel like you have nothing to wear. <laughs> so you clear it out, and you go, oh, yeah, I have plenty. I have everything I need. But it's hard to see when you've got everything else in there. I have one suggestion with closet. So yeah. I keep a laundry bin at the very top of my closet. Yes. And if I take something out and I'm like, I don't quite like this, then I just throw it into the laundry bin on top of the closet, and then at some point I take it and do You it. go through it all and you're like, let's do it. Yep. I love that. Having a system for helping things get out of your house is amazing. I, would, I have a DI section pile mm -hmm. while we're doing a renovation right now. So I have complete chaos in my house. <laughs> um, just scheduled carpet today. So we are very close. We are very close. Okay, um, so empty out cleaning, sorting with an abundance mindset. Um, I like to do yes, no, maybe piles. Like, yes, I love this. I feel awesome in this. Maybe it's like almost. Maybe I love it, right? And then no. Um, and then you count the yeses. If you still have six dresses and 30 blouses, you never have to wear the same thing in a month. That seems like plenty. The other thing that helps me is I have a certain amount of hangers, and they're really nice hangers. Yeah, good, good. And if I get something new, then I have to get rid of something else. Yeah. So then I throw it in the laundry basket. So that makes it show your birthday. So this is how much hangers I will have in my closet. That's it. Yes, yeah. we did that six-year-old birthday this week. Well, clothing, for, thing for me for clothing, because I have no problem getting rid of things. Great. But I'm in a place in my life where I'm changing how I live my life. And so the clothing, yeah, yeah, lifestyle change. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not like doing business presentations and networking right, right. now. I'm working with chickens. Mm -hmm. It's completely different clothes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And so I'm, I'm struggling. To know how much I take out because I know I'm going to go back to doing presentations and things again. Do you know what I mean? Yes. I don't want to keep everything. Yeah. So I'm a teacher. I have this like season built into my life every year. My summer wardrobe is very different from my school year wardrobe. So I completely understand this. Um, I have a box of things that are off season, uh, off lifestyle things that's okay. in my basement. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah. I, I get off season, but I didn't think about. Last season in life. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm also newly pregnant, so I'm quickly oh, right. this doesn't fit anymore. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right, things are rapidly. I don't want clothes in my drawer that I can't wear. That's depressing. So <laughs> it just fall to me, but my brain just went. Oops. Yeah, good, good. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Things that you don't make sense. Yeah. Get it out. Yeah. Hey. Mm. Awesome. Okay, and then putting things back neatly. Uh, you don't know about the upright folding thing. Really really so like I always have to yes. say that folding things upright in files so that you can see so everything's in your drawer. Like, nice. like yeah, the Marie Kondo one. Yeah, the Marie Kondo yeah. style. I, it's yeah. a game changer. Um, so folding your pants so that they can stand up and you can see all of your pants. Mm -hmm. I, and I rotate mine because I have a capsule wardrobe. So I put the last pants I wore in the back and then I know the next pants I wear in the front. And I do that with my hangers as well. So you're always wearing all of your clothes? Yes. Isn't that amazing? You, you deserve a round of applause. <laughs> For that one, my rotation. So. <laughs> um, and then if I skip things more than once or twice, then I'm like, oh, I should probably let that go. I don't want to wear it. I want a tour of your house when it's done, like with like how you like in my drawers and cupboards. Yeah, yeah, you I should post that. It. That's why I do videos on like TikTok oh, okay. and Instagram and stuff. But um, yeah. I, it's not the only time I've ever gotten. What's nice is I've been to Maddie's home and I've stepped in and just watched her little girls for her, and like I can find things in her house, in her kitchen, an unfamiliar space. So when you have your baby, they will come to help you. Yeah, they can make their way around your home easily and find things. And her daughter knows where everything is mm -hmm. very easily. And although she doesn't, she can put things away. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, they benefit. <laughs> 
Okay, we are about to declutter your bags. If you brought a bag, if you didn't, you can do the same thing with your phone. You can do a little digital declutter, okay? So I'm going to coach towards the bags more because that's what I was planning on. But I can throw some tips in for decluttering your phone as well. Okay, so um, working on that abundance mindset for what's in your bags, you're going to empty out completely all the crumbs, all the trash that you've got. Let's see if we can fill this whole thing up. I will run it out to the dumpster in the team. And you're going to work on your abundance mindset. You do not need everything in the kitchen sink in this bag. Okay, I brought my work bag, and I wish I brought two bags for the next session. I didn't think about it. Um, I had lots of crumbs at the bottom of mine, even though I cheated. I just discovered something else. So I've got my work key, my school keys. One of the pins had fallen off. So next tomorrow when I reached in, I would have poked myself. So really glad I found that. I've got my nuts. Because I'm pregnant. You never know. So I need that right now. And I've got two pens, which I feel like I need. But I've got a third that I don't. So I've got my little relocate piles, hair clips, pens that I'm going to take care of. Um, as soon as I can, and I got the trash in the trash can. Okay, any um, revelations when you were, or, or thoughts that you had while you were decluttering your bags or your phones? I saw people working on that. Yeah, I, I thought I knew everything that was in my purse, but there was especially one thing that surprised me, and I had like a particular type of mechanical pencil, Okay. and I saw it, and I didn't know that like the back part had fallen out, so the eraser's missing, the lead's not That's there. Everywhere. And I was like, oh, my pencil. And my initial thought was, i got to keep that, and I'll look for the parts later. And then I was like, i got some other ones at home. Let it go. And so I was like, my pencil. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yay. Good job. My, my daughter's, like, really into coloring, drawing, writing letters, like, whatever. She's in that stage. And she, like, she, like, she, like you she, like, colored something with one of my favorite pens and, like, used up all the ink. And I just was like, it's fine. I can buy another one. It's fine, but I had to like work through that, so I, I totally get that. The other little victories, successes, hard parts. Connie, I am just right now finding a card. This is a card from a lady that did my eyebrow threading. Okay. I'm like, why do I need that card? I have a phone. And I literally just put <laughs> her information, and, then and that makes me feel really good. So yeah. I'm really good. I love that. I love that. I just saw, I saw it on Amazon. I was going to order it. It's an insert that has handles. It's more office like, but it seems a little small, but like a little mini briefcase. Because I had a revelation about a year ago. My husband retired. I think he's got ADHD. So uh -huh. we're all over the place. Yeah. So lots of projects and everything. And I was taking my bag. I have it with me, but it's huge. I had everything. I got my makeup bag in there. I've got everything separated mm -hmm. into you know, units, uh -huh. into That's packages. Good. But you don't but need it all. I don't need it every time I walk into every store no. or into every. No. You just need, you know, your crossbody wallet, yes. and, you know, pen. You know, that's all you need. And so when I got that, that was really neat. And then I started thinking, well, if I have this one unit thing, it'll fit my planner. And it'll fit my makeup bag, and it will fit my just a couple of essentials that I need coupons, mm -hmm. and that's it. Mm -hmm. So it comes with me out to the car, but I leave it in the car as I go in each store oh, and yeah. that, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. And you and sit so, in. Yeah, I was relieved. I didn't have to look this this huge house. big burden. Oh, yeah. You don't need your mm -hmm. makeup walking yeah. to the store. Yes, love that. Mm -hmm. Good. Awesome. You feel okay? Any other successes? I don't know if this is aha, but I maybe you don't like it because it's minim not it's minimalist kind of like I have my I'm not with my kids bag tonight so there's not a lot in here and so even though I have more than one bag they're very purposeful so that I don't have more than I need when I go out Same. if that makes sense yeah huh? I got my diaper bag my mom bag yeah I got my work bag and yes. then I got my tiny little Thing when I'm running errands by myself yes. because I don't want this. the burden. Perfect. Because I've got the store by myself. Yes, so we're the freedom. Yeah. <laughs> we're celebrating. So yes, I also have three backs. Does that help? And then we'll three backs. Perfect. Okay. Good.
My favorite abundance mindset thought again, I have everything I need. If I don't, I figure it out. My sister-in-law, before she did my boot camps, she had this massive diaper bag that like nobody could touch but her because it was so like intricate and it had everything in it, right? She she had like very typical healthy children. So I know if you're in a different situation and you need more things, have more things. She had very typical average kids. She had like thermometer, Tylenol, sunscreen, oh my God. like nail clippers, like everything in this diaper bag. And no one could help her. Like Connie was saying, she, she had no more kids and she was still doing that. She, I think she, I did she was the first kid. She only had two at the time, I think. And then, she, anyway. She, when you get to like your 40s, you take one diaper. Yeah. yeah. And maybe <laughs> yeah. Yes. But it was like the only thing that burden. Everything. So then I was thinking about, okay, so Tylenol, for example. She was lugging around in this bag every day. And um, in my daughter's just turned six this week. She, um, has one time in her six years spiked to fever, is that the right way to say that? <laughs> Had a fever when we weren't like in somebody's home or at home. One time. So that one time we went around the corner to the 7 Eleven, bought some Tylenol, was able to help her through her teething or whatever she was doing. So yeah, one time I spent too much on Tylenol. <laughs> right? I didn't get the deal or whatever. But the not carrying around Tylenol for six years was worth that two months. <laughs> <laughs> right? so, working on that abundance mindset. Some uh, common scarcity mindset thoughts so you can start to recognize so what if I end up needing it, but I spent money on this. Because keeping it, keeping it won't get the money back. <laughs> Someone gave this to me. We talked a little bit about that. Those are common scarcity mindset things. So you can start to notice and start to coach yourself out of. How can I move through this? How can I be abundant on this? I do the same where the food people give me. Yes. And it all is we just had a, like, we are currently kind of still in this, like, two-year-long pandemic, right? <laughs> but I especially think back to those first few months when we were totally locked down. We were not supposed to go to stores, right? If you did not eat your food storage then, <laughs> it means you have the wrong food storage, right? You should only have things that you're actually wanting to eat. Well, actually, you. It's a lot of ifs. <laughs> um, so, uh, at this point, so again, we're in a big renovation, so we don't have any storage. But there are, like, when I do stock up on things, it's things that we're going through regularly. So, peanut butter, pasta, um, honey. Because honey can be used in so many circumstances. Um, coconut oil is the same way. It can be used as, like, a lotion as well as to cook with. Um, anyway, there are there are ways to simplify and maximize food storage, um, but again, worrying about, I mean, maybe I'm just naive, but I feel like I've done pretty okay so far in my life, um, but thinking about like inflation, thinking about these things, it's again fear, it's fear based, right? And so far, we've been okay, we've seen periods of inflation, things have always come back down, sure we were locked down for three months, but we haven't been, like, we were still mostly able to get the things we needed. I remember yeast was really hard to get for a while. And right now the formula, formula shortage is real, right? So I know people are starting to slip into scarcity with that. Um, so there are times of real scarcity, for sure. But most of the time, it's not real, and it's in your head. That's my personal opinion. Yeah? Yeah? Okay. Um... I feel like I feel so scarcity about the time you have left. Go. I want to hear yeah, everything. I know. I, I, I think I'm getting through it. So this one was just um, practice scenarios of helping you start to work through your abundance mindset. So what have you been keeping in your garage? Oh, no. I um, wouldn't scarcity? dare touch the garage. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. My husband yes. is going to do that ever. I mean, someday. <laughs> not That's me. fine. Don't throw away your husband's stuff. Don't do it. <laughs> Unless they're completely oblivious, but they really are completely oblivious. Hide them for six months. Uh, these are just supposed to be, yeah, kind of different exercises. Uh, baking supplies. 
I realize I have a mini cupcake tin. Mini cupcakes. I don't make. Why do I have a mini cupcake tin? I would like that. You already had a two. You're going to have a mini cupcake. See, and I got a new home. That's yours. Um, and then board games. Uh, does anyone actually like to play Risk? <laughs> you don't need your own. You don't need to own it if no one likes to play it. Monopoly? If no one likes to play it, get rid of it. Yeah? You don't need to have these things. You don't. Um, so those are just supposed to be funny serials. Um, and then, yeah, you can uh, do digital clutter the same way you can do it with photos, you can do it with your phone. Um, you don't need all those apps on your phone because the next time you go to Joanne's, guess what? You can re-download the app. Got one minute. So if you don't need it on your phone all the time. Joanne's is fine that I always delete and then re-download. I always do. Once every three months when I go back. Um, this has been a wonderful discussion. Thank you so much for your thoughts, for your questions. Um, and I do want to leave it open just for the last couple minutes. But I do hope you make a goal. So noticing um, an area of your life where you can work on your abundance mindset. Maybe you just have too much stuff in a junk drawer or too much stuff in your office or in your closet or whatever it is. Um, if you what do you do with it? Do you throw it in the garbage or do you give it the DI or what? It, it depends. It depends on the quality. So um, if it's something someone could want, <laughs> then you donate it. If like clothing is uh, damaged or stained, it goes in the trash. There are also ways, if you want to be really intentional, there are ways to like recycle fabrics. Um, H&M does that and they'll give you like a little coupon for doing that. Um, but most of the time, especially if you're doing a really big declutter, um, you don't have the emotional capacity to do that. I don't want to fill up landfills more than anybody else does. Um, but it's all about weighing your emotional budget at the time. So There's a place at the corner of 4th and Main in Springville who can take books. Beautiful. Uh -huh. I buy too many books. Yes. I read them. I don't want to keep them all. And mm -hmm. I, they got to go somewhere. Bless somewhere. you for not keeping them. That's yeah, my good problem. job. <laughs> I have a classroom library. Right. Keep a bunch, but... Yeah. No, that's wonderful. Right by Allen's, the corner by yep. Allen's. Oh, where Allen's, Allen's used to be. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay, please. I am the worst at keeping everything. Okay. And my daughter recently helped me. Good. And I said, I just don't know if I want to get rid of it. And so we decided we would name this pile, I forget the name, Sophie. <laughs> and I would say... I think Sophie needs this. And so it was easier I love to give it to Sophie. I love it. And then we put it yeah. yeah. <laughs> so oh the it I have not heard that before, and I really love that. So thank you so much. I, I was going to say, our steak has a, in August, so maybe in your next class, is People of Decluttering, where they do have people come in from communities in Provo and other places that really rely on our um, clothing and donations. Yeah, it's not the art sale. It's not sold. It's free. Items. Just to take what you need. Our release society can usually do it. Oh, totally. I've been over at the Yes. Um, my neighborhood also has a buy nothing group. That's what it's called on Facebook. And I just post, like, I don't need this vase anymore. And this girl's like, oh my gosh, I'm in a floral design class. I need vases. And I'm like, Oh, here. Lucky yeah, so I can just post my one little thing, I put it on my porch, and then it's gone the next day. And then it's not so, again, different levels of emotional capacity. Sometimes you need to take a big truckload to the DI, and that's great. And other times you can be a little bit more intentional. I just have one thought. If you put everything in your house, when you are moving things, because if you pull yeah. everything out, if you're in a yard sale, yeah. What would you pick out of your own yard sale? Mm -hmm. Pick and I choose. And like I love this and I love this. Then go put it back in your house, like mentally, because it's harder to go down to your basement and then try to select things that I got to get rid of. Instead, you can go the opposite way. Here is what do I want in this space? I like the rest. I love that. My mom would say something. We spend so much time staging a house to sell. Yeah. But we should really be staging our for ourselves. Yeah. Yes, stage your own lives. Thank you so much. It's a perfect like catchphrase to end things on. I want you to work on your abundance mindset. You have everything you need, and you'll figure it out if you don't. I think that's a beautiful thing. Thank you so much for being with me tonight. Uh, I really enjoyed this. Enjoy your other classes. Thank you.